Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. Today I'm going to talk to you about Modern Warfare 2, just because I'm friggin' excited. Let's just go talk about all the things. Alright, minions, so today as I'm recording this, the Modern Warfare 2 Call of Duty Next event happened, and I've been excited for Modern Warfare since it was announced, since it was even rumored, um, just because anyone who's been around knows that, in my opinion, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 is my favorite Call of Duty of all time, the best Call of Duty of all time. Come at me, bro. <laughs> Change my mind. Um, and so, Modern Warfare 2, made by Infinity Ward, falling directly off of what was great about Modern Warfare, I'm just super excited, and everything that I saw today confirms that excitement and makes me super happy, super excited to try it out. Um, the beta starts tomorrow on PlayStation, which um, I'm excited for because I wasn't originally, like, I pre-ordered Modern Warfare 2 on the Series X, um, and PlayStation has the first weekend exclusive. The first couple of days are early access for PlayStation uh, pre-orders, which I am not one of those. I'm not, like I said, I pre-ordered on Xbox, and I'm I'm not making that fat YouTube money, so I can't do both. Um, and then uh, the second two days of this weekend, like the 18th and 19th, are PlayStation Open Beta, which means I could play in that because I have a PS5. Um, but at the next event today, they sh announced or showed that uh, Xfinity, Comcast Xfinity customers, can get a free early access beta code and I went and looked, because I'm an Xfinity customer, and I went and looked, and it allowed you to pick the platform. So I was able to get a code from Xfinity for early access for the PS5 beta without pre-ordering my computer. Yeah, Java updates available. Thank you. Um, I was able to get a code for the PS5 without pre-ordering for early access, so I should be able to get into the beta starting tomorrow, which I'm super excited about. And because it's a new modern Call of Duty, it's going to have cross-platform progression, um, well, obviously for the beta, it's not going to carry over. Um, although I say that, it's not going to carry over to the full game, but the progress they make on the PS5 and the beta will almost certainly carry over to the Series X the following weekend when Xbox and PC get access to the beta. So, I guess we'll figure that out. Point being, I'm excited. I get to hopefully play the game starting tomorrow. I got to preload it on my PS5 using that code today. And until I had that code, you weren't allowed to do that unless you would pre-ordered already on the PlayStation Store, so that's exciting, uh, which means I'm going to get my hands on this, so it's going to be more than just, oh, it looks pretty good, uh, very shortly. So let's talk about some of the stuff in there, and I'm just recording this, just talking to the camera, so I'll roll stuff in the background uh, that's video that I think is pertinent or related to whatever I want to talk about as I go, we'll see. Um, but one of the exciting things, one of the biggest features that they just released and talked about is the Gunsmith 2.0, which is a natural evolution of what they did with Modern Warfare 2019's Gunsmith, and that Cold War and Vanguard kind of took and fucked up with a little bit. Like, they didn't work nearly as well in those games as they did in Modern Warfare 2019, including, if you remember, in Cold War, for like, I don't even know what it was, three, six months, most of Cold War's life cycle, you didn't have the ability to save loadouts like you did in Modern Warfare. And anyway, <laughs> so the new gunsmith is going to be the next level beyond that where in addition to being able to customize your guns, including adding a receiver change now instead of having like the variations be like an ammunition attachment, if you have like the M4 platform, then you can basically unlock a receiver for it that either makes it a smaller caliber SMG that you can build out on that same platform versus maybe a larger caliber like DMR or sniper rifle. I haven't heard much detail about that, right? But, but by changing the receiver of the platform, of the M4 platform, you can then evolve the gun. And the point of the platforms being that when you unlock an attachment for that platform, the optics, the grips, the barrels that those stay with the platform so you don't have to like unlock for every single weapon in the game you know like in model for 2019 you had the m13 and the m4 um there were probably also a couple that were built on kind of the ar-15 platform right once you have those things unlocked like those optics unlocked they carry across the platforms you don't have to re-unlock the same optic on every gun so it's taking that grind and 
optimizing it so that there's still that leveling up grind. You're, you're getting that dopamine hit. You're getting that reward of unlocking things as you go. But not that irritating thing where you're like, I like that one optic. I already unlocked it for this gun. Now I've got to re-unlock it for this gun. And so I'm looking forward to that. I think that'll be really cool and less tedious. A lot of what they talked about for Modern Warfare 2 was, hey, we took all the things that we really liked about Modern Warfare 2019 and we made them better. And so instead of them focusing on maximizing the grind, they're trying to optimize the grind so that it's fun, and they're maximizing replayability of the game through other means, through variety of game modes and through cross-platform, uh, cross-game progression, right? So Call of Duty right now has the ability to, like with the Battle Pass, you rank up in Warzone, and you can also rank up in whatever platform you're playing, Modern Warfare or Cold War on. Like, I still go back and play Modern Warfare 2019 all the time, and it still counts towards the Vanguard Battle Pass, which is cool, even though I'm not playing Vanguard, but like, that the idea is that that cross-platform progression uh, still exists, um, which is cool, and so that's going to be a big part of Modern Warfare 2. In addition to the fact they're adding Call of Duty Mobile, which will also tie into that. So if you're sitting on the toilet playing Call of Duty on your phone, you're also ranking up your Battle Pass. Who knows how much I'll do that. <laughs> but that's cool, right, that they're doing that. So the, I'm excited about the weapons. I'm excited about that, the, the ecosystem of what was great about Modern Warfare 2019. Everything that I liked about Modern Warfare 2019 seems to be there. The gameplay is smooth. The controls look still very smooth. Um, the art style is still relatively bright, which I like, versus kind of the drab colors of Cold War, or the dark, murky World War II crap of Vanguard. Like, it looks very Infinity Ward, which I like that better. It makes me feel like I'm not fucking depressed or in a dark room <laughs> during every game that I play. Um, they've evolved some things as well. They changed the perk system for, like, the first time in a long time, um, where you get, like two perks to start out with, and then as the match progresses, either via time or score, right, so you'll earn it faster if you're doing better, but you'll earn it anyway just from being in the game, you unlock a third perk, and then there's a fourth perk that's kind of like an ultimate perk that I'm assuming isn't the guaranteed unlock throughout the game, but if you do well enough, you'll get that. So it's going to add an interesting twist on how perks work, I'm not sure about all the detail around that, what perks fall into what categories, um, but that'll shake things up a little bit that could be interesting. Uh, and just really excited about some of the changes that they're making and excited about a lot of the changes that they're not making, right? The core of what was great about Modern Warfare seems to still be there, seems to be completely intact. They've added a couple movement mechanisms. Um, one is the ability to ledge hang. So on a high mantle, instead of immediately pulling yourself up, you can actually hang there and use a pistol and peek so that'll be interesting to see how that works into the gameplay um, without even really seeing it being used. Let me just go ahead and guess that that'll be kind of a novelty that probably won't get used very much and most people will just skip right through it. Um, but who knows, depending on how the maps are designed, it could end up being like a really tactical component of the game. Bigger than that, I think, is A, slide canceling isn't a thing anymore, which is to say you can still slide, which is a good movement mechanic, but slide canceling and using that to make yourself move faster. They took it out of the game because they don't want people moving like that because it's anyone who's been playing Modern Warfare 2019 or Warzone in the last three years knows that that's the meta and it's fucking irritating watching, you know, mo modern military soldiers just fucking slide jumping across the fucking map. So I'm glad that they're taking that out. <laughs> uh, I understand why they didn't in Modern Warfare 2019. They could have fixed it as like a bug, but it became such a big part of the meta. If they had just taken it away, people would have been pissed. Um, whereas with Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2, they're like, oh, clean slate, and they're taking that away. So thank you for that. And they're adding dolphin diving. I'm so excited. W was it Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 2? I think it was Black Ops 1. Bla the original Call of Duty Black Ops that Treyarch did had a dolphin dive in it, and I fucking loved that. And I'm so glad that it's coming in this game, and that they've talked about specifically designing the maps with windows so that you can dolphin dive out of them. I'm, gonna, I'm sure I'm playing the clip in the background here of a clip that I have. If I can find it, I should be able to find it, because I can search it on my own YouTube channel. Um, 
of me dolphin diving in Black Ops out a window, like crashing through the glass like a fucking movie scene, and then turning and killing a guy. Like, I'm excited for that that fun aspect of it. It looks like the Infinity Ward map design is there. They talked about even tightening up the 6v6 maps so that they're, you know, if anything, slightly smaller, which I think is really a good way to go versus this kind of move towards bigger and bigger maps, which I don't really like in general. Reference Battlefield 2042 for an example of that. But separately, they'll have their ground war mode. Um, and they're also expanding on that, what do they call it, like an invasion mode that will be built out for bigger maps, and that will be a different kind of gameplay. Like in right now in Modern Warfare, their ground war mode is essentially kind of Battlefield Conquest in Call of Duty, and it's actually quite a bit better than Battlefield 2042 is right now, even three years down the road. So there will be that piece of gameplay too, if you're like a Call of Duty player who likes the Battlefield experience more. You can do that. And there's the 6v6 Call of Duty modes, which I really love, so there's going to be that. I've heard rumors, they didn't confirm it today, but they did talk about a lot of classic Modern Warfare 2 maps like Terminal and High Rise. I've heard rumors that Modern Warfare 2 is going to have all of the MW2, Modern Warfare II, the new Modern Warfare 2, is going to have the same MW2 number <laughs> after COD 4 um, maps. And I would, I would be all for that, because having... Honestly, Modern Warfare 2 really was a great Call of Duty game. If you consider the fact that there was tons of glitching and hacking and all of this weird, crazy shit, the javelin glitch, the all of this weird shit that happened in Modern Warfare 2's life cycle, secondary weapons being fucking ridiculously powerful, put it, taking that part away, slapping the, the bones of Modern Warfare, the new Modern Warfare, on top of those old classic maps that are great, I'm all about that. This is... This really is... I'm super excited. If you can't tell, super excited because this feels like a, the, the newest ultimate iteration of Call of Duty, which will make it the best FPS, online multiplayer FPS game of all time, in my opinion, which is exciting. Especially since Cold War let me down. Battlefield Five really let me down. It ended up being a decent game, but the World War II setting, no thanks. Uh, Battlefield One let me down, right? So since Battlefield Four, which was great, and that was also in that same time frame, basically as Mo as Modern Warfare 2019. Battlefield One, Battlefield Five, decent games. I wasn't a fan of the era, right? Battlefield 2042, fucking shit show. It's a mess. It's not any fun. It's terrible. Uh, Call of Duty Cold War. Uh, ugh, it just not, I didn't like the art style, I didn't like the gun balance, the guns felt like airsoft guns, they didn't have the, the kind of oomph that the Modern Warfare guns had, I wasn't a huge fan of the maps, like Cold War was pretty shit, um, Vanguard also ended up being pretty shit, again an era I don't like, Modern Warfare, you know, World War II again, not great, and then all of the just Vanguard, another one that didn't bring me back that, that wasn't great, map design not great. Um, a couple of good ones in there, but those, honestly, one of the best maps in World War II, or in, in <laughs> World War II. Yeah, it was. It was from Call of Duty World War II. Uh, Dome, the, the one in Vanguard is, point is, map design outside of Infinity Ward's games has been pretty shitty across the Call of Duty series. I can't really think of many Cold War maps that jump out as like, oh yeah, like, that's a really good map, like... For Treyarch games, right, like, uh, what's the one, the, the ship? <laughs> Is it called Ship? I don't know. No, the Cruise Liner one, that, that one. That's got a good traditional kind of three-lane setup. That one's pretty good. Like, I think of all these iconic Call of Duty maps that really jump to the front of my mind, and they are Infinity Ward maps, either from Modern Warfare, the original COD 4, Modern Warfare, um, some of the ones even from follow-on games, the one, some of the ones they're including in Modern Warfare 2, are like from so the naming image is weird like modern warfare 3 <laughs> modern warfare 2 original modern warfare 2 modern warfare 3 some of those maps that were pretty decent modern warfare 3 as a game didn't really capture me either although it, it felt like a cleaner version of modern warfare 2 but for whatever reason it just i just didn't get hooked on modern warfare 3 and that might have been because what was that at the time was battlefield 3 or battlefield 4 up against that one and that could have been what took me away from that one anyway there's a lot of good stuff coming 
to Modern Warfare 2. 2. <laughs> Modern Warfare 2 2 is coming out in 2022. That's interesting. So maybe I'll just sort of call it Modern Warfare 22. Um, it's just, it, yeah, yeah. Everything that I've seen so far looks good. The new game modes that they're adding, like a hostage rescue mode, um, is cool. Very Rainbow Six Siege ish, but in, you know, in the Call of Duty. Uh, you know, engine Call of Duty bones, which I like. I mean, anything you can take the movement and gunplay of Call of Duty, which is the best in the biz, right? It just is. Um, and lay that on top of these game modes that I like from other games. Like, if I feel like a search and destroy kind of, you know, mood, hostage rescue kind of mood, I can do that. If I want kind of a ground war, battlefield, conquest kind of mood, I can do that. If I want some traditional 6v6, you know, arcade, um, like, uh, level-based shooters. What, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, an arena shooter, basically. I'm looking for kind of an arena shooter. Then it's got that, like... And then, if I'm feeling the BR piece, then Warzone 2 is going to be coming out, like, two weeks after the launch of the, of the full game. So, it's going to be, like, so much <laughs> shooter goodness available in there. Plus the fact that they've kind of hinted at about two years minimum... Well, not two years, probably minimum, but probably about a two-year life cycle for this. They're not doing the annual Call of Duty releases, um, is what they're saying going forward. Who knows if next year they'll do something else in that realm. They did announce um, at the event today that DMZ is a thing in Modern, for Modern Warfare 2 that will be in addition to Warzone 2. It'll be a... The way that they talked about it, like a kind of customizable like extraction shooter like extraction royale kind of thing but where the player gets to like decide for themselves how they interact with that world and which missions and which types of missions they decide to address and how do they go about it whether it's loud or stealth they didn't give a lot of information just enough to kind of tease that yes it exists and that's kind of the nature of it that should be exciting maybe i don't know if that's there's no announcement for when that's going to be out yet so maybe that's what's going to be coming in sometime next year instead of like a new Call of Duty game. Point being, this Modern Warfare 2 engine ecosystem, which is going to be built on the bones of the great things of Modern Warfare 2019, but better, is going to be Modern Warfare 2, is going to be the Call of Duty ecosystem for the next two years. And that's really exciting because Battlefield 2042 is showing no signs of becoming fun <laughs> so i need a good solid shooter to sink dozens and dozens of hours into and i'm looking and that is going to be Modern warfare 2 i'm looking forward to getting back into really being able to churn out content um for a variety of reasons just where i was at in my life as well as the game cycles over the last few years it's been really kind of hit and miss like i wasn't really on my game from Modern Warfare 2019 to really churn out quality content there, um, although I did do a decent amount um, in on that game. And then Cold War wasn't super inspiring, so I did some stuff there. Vanguard, I've done very little on. The Vanguard Battlefield 2042 this last year has just been, every month or so I just check in to, to play them and be like, okay, they're still not super fun. They're still pretty shit. Still can't hear footsteps in Vanguard. You're still running around forever in 2042. It's just, yeah, it's been so disappointing. But when I've got a need to play a really good shooter, I jump back. I've been jumping back into Modern Warfare 2019 a ton. And what's left in that game for me has been unlocking weapon camos. Um, and I already went through and unlocked all the attachments for every weapon in that game just by virtue of me playing through 2019 organically, which is where I made those weapon tactics videos for Modern Warfare, um, was just a, through that process of the fact that I enjoyed unlocking everything for all of those weapons. So now I'm going to get to do that again in this newer, better gunsmith system in Modern Warfare 2, but also, anyway, the point I'm saying is when I'm going, going back to Modern Warfare 2019, the only things I've really had left to unlock for the most of those weapons on camos has been crouching kills, mounted kills, long shot kills um yeah and those are because that's not really my play style <laughs> i don't tend to crouch and sneak around a lot i don't tend to spend a lot of time mounted up on things i don't spend a lot of time sitting way back shooting people from a mile away 
Um, I can do that, and there are times when I'm in that mood and it's enjoyable. Going back and playing Modern Warfare 2019, and rather than just slaying out and just playing aimlessly, I like having something to work towards. So I've been doing those things, like unlocking the gold weapon camos for those weapons, by doing the gameplay things that I don't really like. So I've been building streaks, basically, by setting up mobile shields, mounting on them, you know, crouching and trying to shoot people from a long ways away. And it's not the most fun way for me to play those games. Um, and there are times when I'm just like, okay, like, especially if we get stacked up against a team, and I'm like, all right, it's time to just slay out, and I just switch to one of my go-to kits and just start killing people. Um, but even that, in that context of that, those play styles in Modern Warfare 2019, the way that game was built, they are valid. They do work. You can have success playing back and using a mounted position, but without it being uncounterable, right? When people, when I come up against people that are playing like that, there are ways to counter that if you're actually willing to just, you know, switch your kit for a second and just, you know, choose a sniper to pick off someone that's sitting at the back, you know, pick up a smoke grenade, throw on a thermal sight. Uh, I came up against a guy the other day who was mounting up at long range with a thermal optic and throwing, just spamming smokes with his field upgrade being equipment so that he could just restock his smokes and throw them. He was probably also going for a challenge of killing people in smoke, right? But to counter that, I took the weapon I was already using, threw a thermal optic, threw, threw, threw a thermal optic on it, and fucking ruined his match. Right? He was like, "Okay, this match, I'm not going to do this anymore because this guy's shooting me in the face now. I'm not getting away with it." Um, so having that kind of rock paper scissors is exciting. On that same note, Modern Warfare 2's got new equipment, new field upgrades. I think they said something like 13 or more field upgrades between Core and Warzone. Like, they, one of the ones they mentioned is a DDoS attack. So essentially, there's going to be more equipment related to people who have more of a campy play style. Or they call them Sentinel or Sentries. More of a stationary, defending type play style. I have videos in the past you want to go look at the difference between defending and camping. If you don't want to be a dirty camper, but you want to play defensively... There's an important way to do that. You can go and search through my catalogs and, and see that. But there's equipment related to that, right? Which has been in most Call of Duty games. I'm sure it's going to be pretty standard stuff. Proxy mines, claymores, motion sensors, things like that. But this DDoS equipment, if you're trying to clear out a building where there's a bunch of campers with a bunch of equipment set up, one, put, one button, it turns off everything in that radius so that you can go in and clear that area out, right? Moves and counter moves. Rock, paper, scissors. Like... The way that they think through game design, I really love with Infinity Ward. Whereas the other studios that have kind of been tacked on to Infinity Ward's success, right? Call of Duty 4 was a breakout smash success, and Activision was like, fuck, we gotta jump on this. And then they brought in Treyarch. Treyarch did a pretty decent job. Um, Black Ops and Black Ops 2 are up in my in my list of top favorite CODs. I had a prob I, I've been meaning for years to do a video of uh, like my, you know, ranking all of the COD games as my favorites, but you're talking about going through, through that just real quickly off the top of my head. Modern Warfare 2019, number one. Number two is either COD 4, just, and that might be a little bit of nostalgia, but that was still a fantastic game. The original Black Ops, I really loved. So that that is almost kind of like back and forth. Modern War COD 4, because I like the era more. Black Ops wasn't so old that it was like World War II and I didn't like it, but it was also not super modern. But despite that, the gameplay was great. I thought the maps in the original uh, Black Ops were great. Um, Black Ops 2 I remember also enjoying a lot because it was kind of near future. So again, not my favorite kind of time period for that. But again, decent map design. The weapon balance was pretty good. Time to kill was pretty good. Um, I liked that. So those are some really solid COD games. Um, those are the ones that jump into my head immediately as far as like, man, I really loved playing COD during that time. Call of Duty World War II. When Call of Duty World War II came out, I enjoyed that game. It was good enough. But I ended up spending most of that year playing COD 4. Um, and yeah, a lot of the COD since then have just been kind of like muddled messes. Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, I guess I'll put on that list as far as you know, one-man army, pro, like, there was some crazy shit in Modern Warfare 2, like, they took what was good about Modern Warfare, about COD 4, and what it kind of introduced to shooters, which was attachments for guns, and kill streaks and perks, right, that's the COD formula, really, 
and they turned that shit up to 20 <laughs> instead of 11, right? They went fucking nuts on kill streaks. They went fucking nuts on perks, pro perks, all kinds of shit you could do. And it was a bit much. And so even though that was a great game and it, and it was a lot of fun and it was like the fucking Wild West, it was, st it was also kind of a nightmare. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then Modern Warfare 3... Honestly, I remember being kind of forgettable, and I don't know if it was just because of that time in my life, or I was just over it, or like I said, Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4, I sunk so much time into those during that era, so that was probably why Modern Warfare 3 maybe didn't, didn't blow up my skirt, who knows. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's kind of like stream of consciousness where I'm at with this. I've already been yapping for over 20 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and just stop right here. There's going to be more shit for Modern Warfare 2 coming out soon. I'm going to be posting fucking beta gameplay in the next few days. So I'm fucking excited about that. Let me know what you guys think about Modern Warfare 2, Call of Duty in general. You guys still just on the Battlefield 2042 hype train? <laughs> right, that shit into the ground? Let me know. If you guys like this video, like me just ranting and rambling and shit like that, go ahead and give me a like. If you don't like it, let me know. Give me a dislike, even though no one else can see it. I can still see it, and it still hurts my feelings. So that's important that you know that it still makes me feel bad. Um, <laughs> subscribe for more stuff. Lots more shooter. Lots of Modern Warfare 2. Lots of Modern Warfare 2. You're also going to see more, I think significantly more Sea of Thieves. That game has also been absolutely fantastic and super fun lately. Very open world sandbox in an unexpected way. If you guys aren't already checking out my Sea of Thieves video, I'm telling you, go get into it. Game Pass. Game Pass. Anyway. I'll see you guys in the next one.